Christ lived under God's word. Welcome to the club. There's going to be a raging fire with the breath of God breathing upon it. And as he breathes upon that fire, an instrument shall raise up out of that fire. Spiritual, anointed, living truth. It's one thing to hear the word. It's another thing to be under the presence of God and to be on the fire of the Holy Ghost. And to know that you know that the word that's coming forth is from the throne room. It is time to be a royal priesthood and a holy nation. It is time to be the sons and daughters of a living God. It's time for the roar of the lion to be restored in God's name. I don't care what your problem or situation is. I know who the answer is. And his name is Jesus. I'm Chief Apostle Timothy Vanover. This is my lovely wife, Jennifer, Apostle Jennifer Vanover. We are the lead pastors of Revival for Christ Club International Ministry right here in Moore, Oklahoma. We want to say we're glad you decided to join us today. Amen. So, sweetheart, do you want to open us in prayer today? Yes, absolutely. So, wherever you're at, I just want to encourage you today, stand up on those feet, get excited, and lift your hands up to our yes. Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you this morning for this glorious day. And we pray that your anointing will fall down upon us as we worship in your holy presence. We are grateful for the Holy Spirit of God. And we ask today that your Holy Spirit will begin to touch our minds and change our yes. hearts. Sure. Father, I even pray that as someone is watching today, that you will shower out a rain of Holy Spirit, yes, anointing upon them in the name of Jesus. And we glorify you, God. Yes, God. You amen sure and you. amen. We lift up and exalt the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus. Yes, amen. amen. All right, I want you to sit back right now. We got a very special song coming up for you. This is a very special brother to me. Sit back and relax. I think you'll be very blessed by this song. It's called I Will Praise the Lord. Leading in the darkness, the cell was cold and black. Driven to unconsciousness by the stripes upon his back, he heard a voice call out his name. My mind began to clear. In the darkness, he replied, "Silence, I hear." Oh, my brother, Silas. All uttered with a call Today I thought for sure We were going home And when I opened up my eyes I looked upon his face But here we are together In this dreadful place But I will pray the Lord, I will praise the Lord, no matter what tomorrow brings, what it has in store, I know I will praise the Lord. Oh, it's 
silence and praise the Lord The walls began to sway Christmas started waking up Singing through their ears Some men started swearing And others were in tears But suddenly it happened And there was no mistake As holy silence praised the Lord The walls began to shake important things about us here at Revival for Christ is that ability to be able to bring together men and women who have mantles or callings together, to join them together, to lift up and exalt the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. One of the things about Revival for Christ, we're not interested in personal exaltation. We're not interested in lifting up or glorifying the person. We're interested in lifting up the only one that the Bible has ever told us to lift up. Jesus said, if I be lifted up, he would draw them in unto him. Jenny, in just a few weeks now, we're coming up very quickly now, yes. our August uh, the 12th, we right. start our Holy Ghost Apostles Conference 22 yes. with Apostle Larry Fisher. And I'll tell you what, why don't we tell the folks a little bit more about this very special conference that's coming up. Sit back, Tasha's going to tell you more about the Apostles. Revival for Christ Club International Ministries presents the Holy Ghost Apostles Conference 2022 with Chief Apostle Timothy Vanover. The Bible says in Corinthians 6, says you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of the living God. Now, if we are a temple, how can we expect a holy and a righteous God to dwell in a contaminated temple? Apostle Larry Fisher. You're not, you're not holy because you change how you act or where you go or the company that you that you keep. You're holy based on the victories that you receive inwardly that you allow for the Holy Spirit to take you through the process. Apostle Jenny Van. God is raising up an army of warriors. And when they speak, they will speak with a two-edged sword and a flame of fire. We are yet to see the greatest revival that God will bring to the body of Christ. Join us August 12th through the 14th, nightly at 7.30 p.m. and Sunday at 11 a.m. as we unite the mantles of God's Holy Ghost tribes. Oh, I love that. Every time that I have the opportunity to hear that song, it's a blessing to me. I do too. I hope it was a blessing to you. Now, right now, Jenny, we're getting ready to go to the message. And this message was actually preached during Thanksgiving of last year here live at Revival for Christ Club International Headquarters. But you know, it's something I think that we always need to remember. One of the things that I feel like we as believers can always increase in is our thankfulness and our gratefulness to the Lord. Being thankful for what He did, or grateful for what He did. When's the last time you told the Lord how thankful you were? When's the last time you were grateful? 
for just a little thing. It didn't have to be a big thing, just a little thing. You came home today from work safe and secure. Give the Lord the praise. Give the Lord the honor. Be mm -hmm. thankful. Sit back and relax as we bring this message, the heart of thanksgiving. Because my message tonight is on the heart of thanksgiving, all right? What are you thankful about this morning? Have you been thankful for every situation you've encountered? Have you been thankful for every situation you've come across? Or are you only thankful when the results benefit you? When are you thankful? Are you thankful for the struggles? Are you thankful for the challenges? Are you thankful for the opportunities that you have to be able to let your faith begin to shine through? Are you thankful for everything you encounter? Or are you only thankful when it benefits you? Say, so Brother Vanna, what do you mean by that? Sometimes you're going to have challenges in this life. Sometimes you're going to be facing in situations that will be somewhat difficult. And you need to rejoice and be thankful in all things. Be faithful in whatever you, uh, in whatever you face. Amen? Go in your Bibles to Psalms 100. Psalms 100, and we're going to start reading the very first verse. Psalms 101. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness and come before his presence with singing. Know that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and sheep of his pasture. Enter his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name. For the Lord is good, his mercy is everlasting, and his truth endureth to all generations. I want you to look what it says here. It says, Know ye not that the Lord, he is God. Know you not that he made you and you did not make yourself. Now sometimes this mentality gets mixed up in the believer. Sometimes you get to thinking somehow that God serves you. That God is your bellboy. But let me explain something to you. He is the great I am. The God of Abraham. The God of Isaac. And the God of Jacob. It is time the people begin to acknowledge his majesty. Acknowledge his greatness. And realize... You did not make you. He made you. Amen. You do not set conditions of service. You do not set conditions of what you're going to do and what you're not going to do. Well, God, if you do this, I'll do that. Well, God, if this happens, I'll do that. Hey, if God says do it, you do it. That's all there is to it. That's right. There's no consideration. There's no conditions laid down on it. If you're going to start laying conditions down on God for your service, you ain't never going to serve nobody. Because you're laying the conditions down. But I like what he says here. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and do his courts with praise. What does that mean? Enter his gates with thanksgiving and his courts with praise. Daryl, why do you use the term gate? What's the word gate mean? Isn't gate what you enter to go into the city? Isn't gate what you enter to go into the house? Don't you have a fence around your house? You have to come to the gate, right? You have to go through the gate. Gate represents spiritually an entrance point. Gate is an entrance point. Now, what is the entrance point that the devil enters you before you commit sin? Mind. This is a gate. This is the entry point. Think about this for a minute. You ain't never sinned till you thought about it first. The devil came with the idea. The devil came with the thought. You meditated on it a little bit instead of casting it down, instead of casting down all imaginations, every high thing that exalted itself against the knowledge of God, you meditated on it. You kept it in focus. You kept it there. And when you did, it manifested. And the manifestation was sin. See, that's why when the devil comes to the gate, Daryl, when he comes to your gate, tries to enter your gate, imagine how surprised he is when he looks up and finds the mind of Christ. How surprised is he when he comes to you and says, hey, I got a th Whoa, hold on a second there. I had a thought for you, Ryan. What are you doing with Christ up in your thoughts? Well, I know how to get Christ out of your thought. I know how to get you to abandon uh, that gate. Let me tell you what I'll do here. I'll start letting things go wrong for you. You'll start seeing how much God ain't for you. Your car will break down. You'll lose your job. You'll do this. You'll do that. And then all of a sudden, he'll look and see, where's your gate now? 
Still got the mind of Christ? Or are you starting to get down a little bit? Starting to open up the gate a little bit so the devil can come in and lie to you. You need to understand something. There needs to be a, a, a perseverance. There needs to be a commitment and a dedication by God's people that we understand, acknowledge, and realize that this is the gate. And if we feel this gate with thankfulness, if we feel this gate, see here, think about this for a second. Are you getting this? Think about this for a second. If the devil can play on your physical and he can get you to start doubting God and he can get you to start giving up on God, then he starts inching his way into that gate. Can you say praise God? But think about this for a minute. What happens when the devil comes and he says, Ryan, you lost your job. Looks like God wasn't for you. So let's get in the gate. And when he walks up, Ryan goes, thank you, God, I lost my job. I don't know what's going on, but I give you praise. I don't know what's going on, but I thank you, God. I thank you, God. I thank you, God. Honey, you know how upset the devil is when he sets out a plan and he comes to your gate and he finds thankful. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. He finds thankfulness there. He finds thanksgiving there. The church needs to repent and return to a heart of thanksgiving, a heart of gratitude, a heart that says, God, your will, not my will be done. That's where the church needs to go back to. He comes to you and says, this ain't happening and that ain't happening. Trying to discourage you. Trying to get you down. That's what he does. So, but when he comes to your gate, he comes to this mind. If he finds you meditating on your problems, you're open game. If he finds you commiserating or being upset, about the situations and circumstances you're facing, he can get a foothold. When he comes to that gate and he finds thanksgiving in the midst of the storm. Oh, y'all ain't listening to me. When he finds thanksgiving in the midst of, oh, thank you, Lord. Don't you know, get no discouragement. Oh, y'all ain't hearing me. Can no discouragement get through a gate that's got thanksgiving. Can no set spirit get through a gate that there's thanksgiving. Come on. When you go, my heart is hurt, but I'm thankful for all that God did. I'm thankful, God. I'm grateful, God. God, I give you praise. I thank you for the day. I thank you for the eyes to see, the ears to hear, the legs to walk, the mouth to speak. Thank you, God. Trust me, all you got to do is look very simply. And you'll find something to thank God for. You'll find something to be grateful for. But when you leave this gate abandoned, when you leave this gate empty, when you leave this gate in a way to where it is only motivated by your carnal, carnal or physical situations, then you're opening the gate up for entrance by the enemy. He's going to enter that gate. The gate, he can't ever enter the gate if you're thankful. Now see, if you're thankful... That's a proclamation of established excellency. If you're thankful, that means the excellency of Christ abides in you. And the reason you know the excellency of Christ abides in you is because you're not moved by circumstances. You're not moved by situations. When things don't go your way, when somebody says something evil about you, when somebody does something to you, you turn and say, listen, God, I am grateful. I am thankful for your anointing. I am thankful for your spirit. I am thankful for your word. I am thankful for your power. God, I refuse to be down. I refuse to be defeated. I refuse it. And here's the key, my friend. If you can keep the devil away from the gate, how can the sin manifest without the thought? Come on. You're not hearing me. The Lord's gave you a great system. You just got activated. That's why the Bible says in Philippians, let this mind be in me, which was also in Christ Jesus, who thought it not robbery to be equal with God, but took for himself no reputation, followed himself to the death, even the death of the cross. He said, enter his gates with thanksgiving. When you lift up and enter into the presence of God, you don't get into the presence of God complaining. You don't get into the presence of God coming in and, and giving out your laundry list of things you think you need. You know how you enter the presence of God? Thankfully. 
I thank you, God, for your anointing. I thank you, God, for your revelation. I thank you, God, for your spirit. I thank you for every challenge. I thank you for everybody that hates me. I thank you for everybody that doesn't, wanna, doesn't like me. Because what, what, what is there not to like? Oh, the Holy Ghost. What is there not to like? Oh, yeah, the Word of God. What is there not to like? When I speak, you get convicted. That is what you don't want. That's what we don't want. But the thing you have to understand is, what I'm speaking to you comes right back at me. i got to live by the same thing. And here's the thing I know. When my mind is not thankful, the devil tries to creep in there. When my mind is not full of thankfulness, when I am not entering the presence of God, oh, man, thank you. So many times, and I'm going to get in trouble right now. So many times, you only pray, you only approach God, and you only get in His presence when you want something. When you need something. When you want something. You want a new house. You want a new car. You want a new husband, new wife, whatever it is you want. New job, whatever it is. You go to God and say, God, I'll come to you now because I need something. I'll come to you now because I want something. But you need to understand, when you enter into that communication, when you enter into the presence of God, you must come thankfully. You must come gratefully. Can I tell you why? You know why you got to come thankfully? You know why you want to come? You got to come gratefully. You didn't earn the right to be there. Come on, you're not hearing me. You're not listening to me. You did not earn the right to stand in the presence of God. You did not earn that right. That right was earned to you 2,000 years ago by the only begotten Son of God, Jesus Christ. We laid down His life on that cross to give you life and that more abundantly. He earned that access for you. He earned it for you. How dare you even cross the threshold without being thankful? This is the entrance. Thank you. I'm grateful. I'm not worthy to look upon you. I'm not worthy to lift my hands. I love you, God. I'm thankful. I'm grateful. I'm grateful. See, our pride, our flesh, our arrogancy makes us think we can get in to the presence of God without Jesus. Makes you think. You can enter his gate without being thankful. Makes you think you can enter that place with him without being grateful and thankful. Cannot happen. Amen. We need to make sure that we have the Holy Ghost moving and motivating our thoughts and our ideas. If we enter his gates, here's the other thing. Not only do you need to fill your gate with thanksgiving, but if you're going to enter his gate, you have to have the right mind. Let me ask you this question. You just answer this for me. The Bible says, let this mind be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Paul said, be renewed in the spirit of the mind daily. So question for you. Can you enter the gate, God's gate? What is that gate? What is God's gate? Anybody know what God's gate is? Jesus, the mind of Christ. The mind of Christ is the gate you got to have to go to the presence of God. Tell me how you get there any other way. Can you get into the presence of God when you've got a carnal mind? Can you get into the presence of God when you're operating by your flesh? Can you get into the presence of God when you're mad and arrogant and upset and prideful? No, you cannot. The only way you're going to get into the presence of God is to bring your flesh under subjection to allow this mind to be in you, which is also in Christ Jesus. Then you enter his gates. That's why it says... Enter his gates with thanksgiving. You walk in. I'm grateful, God. My mind is in the right place, God. I got the mind of Christ. You show me one scriptural or spiritual proof that you can enter the presence of God without the mind of Jesus Christ. Show it to me. Does anybody know why you can't enter with your carnal mind? Why can't you enter the presence of God with your flesh? And with your carnal mind, other than the obvious reasons. But why can't you do it? Do you know why? Because the second that you step in there with that carnal mind, the second you were to step in there, it would already be contaminated. It would already be corrupted. And every place you put your foot would be corrupted. Be corrupted. Be corrupted. If a little leaventh leaventh a whole lump, what do you think a full footstep does? So God made it clear. You can't get in this gate. Without thanksgiving.
you got to come thankful. In order to really understand what you're being thankful about, you have to have the mind of Christ. That mind of Christ cannot be renewed and cannot be established without established truth. Established truth comes from the equal measure of the Word and equal measure of the Spirit combined together to establish truth. It is in that established truth that revelation comes alive. When, when let revelation comes alive, you have a choice to embrace or reject. If you embrace transformation, if you reject nothing, but when you embrace, things begin to change. And as you begin to change over time, eventually manifestation begins to happen. You begin to show it outwardly. It begins to come alive in you outwardly. Okay? Let's go on. He says, enter his gates with thanksgiving. <clears throat> the access has been provided by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. The ability to turn the key is the Holy Ghost. Can you say praise God? But we can enter the presence of God. But this is why people don't think God hears them. This is why people don't think God knows what they're saying. Because they'll say, man, I went and prayed, but God didn't answer my prayer. I went and sought God. But he ended, I lay down on my face before God. Yeah, but you didn't enter his courts. I mean, you didn't enter his gates with thanksgiving. You didn't come in thankful and grateful. You came in immediately asking. You came in immediately wanting something. Why should he give you something when you're not thankful for what's already been given? Why? Why would he give you anything else? He says, you haven't been thankful for what I've given you so far. I've never heard you thank me that Jesus gave you life. I've never heard you thank me that I gave you the promise of the Holy Ghost. I've never heard you thank me that there's revelation for you to, uh, for you to absorb. I've never heard you thank me. Come on now. I like this next part. He says, in his courts with praise. Does anybody know what that means? So he said, enter his gates with thanksgiving. When you come to the presence of God, you're thankful and you're grateful and you got the mind of Christ and you're accepting all the wonderful things that God's done in your life, the spiritual heritage he's given to you. Why does he say, my courts with praise? What is a court? Does anybody know courts? Now, back in the old days, the court would be like a little enclosed area there, and they would go out and stand in the court. David used to go to the court, and he used to proclaim all the works of the Lord in the court. He would tell all the people what was going on in the court. But court is also a word for a room in a place where something happens. I'm sorry, what happens in a court? What happens in a court? Judgment happens in a court. So why do he say, oh Lord, help me. Why do he say, enter my gates with thanksgiving and my courts with praise? Because once you get into the presence of God, once you come in thankful, once you're in the presence of God, guess what's going to happen? The Word and the Spirit are going to begin to judge you. They're going to begin to judge the actions. They're going to begin to judge the speech. They're going to begin to judge the life. And if you love the Word, you love the Spirit, you love God, you will praise Him. For the judgment. Amen. You'll say, if I'm failing, Lord, show me and I'll change. If I'm messed up, Lord, show me and I'll turn it around. And so when he shows you, you praise him. I praise you, God. I praise you, God. And what's the best way to praise him? Lift up your hands and shout out your voice. Is that the best way to praise him? I can tell you the best way to praise him. You know what the best way to praise him is, Daryl? Be like him. Be like him. Show his image. Show his nature. Speak his word. Do not step in your own ability. Do not step in your own knowledge. It is time, church, that every man, woman, and child learn how to enter the gates, stand in the court, how to be thankful, and how to really praise the Lord. Because see, when you step into his courts, what happens there? The word of God judges you. The spirit of God judges you. The anointing of God judges you. And it comes to you and says, hey, listen, you got this thing in your life you need to get rid of. You got this thing in your life you need to eradicate. If you get rid of this, you're going to grow more in me. You're going to be closer to me. So, of course, you praise him. You thank him for the revelation of the truth of that. But the way to really praise him is take that knowledge, take the word, Take the spirit, take the truth, take the revelation, take the transformation, take the manifestation, and change. Change.
judge. The next time you go to the court, that element will no longer be there. The next time you go to the court, it's already gone. See, there has to start being a hunger for judgment. There has to start being a hunger to say, God, we want you to give us judgment. Lord, we want you to tell us what is true. Lord, I don't want to walk in the blindness of my flesh. I don't want to walk in the arrogancy of my carnality. But I want to know without a shadow of a doubt what your word says. I want to know with a shadow of a doubt how to establish. How to be established in a relationship with you. So here's the thing. Oh, Lord, this is good. See, you enter into his presence, and you must do it with thanksgiving and gratefulness. So it starts back at your house. It starts back at your place. You've got to bring the carnal mind under subjection. When you bring it under subjection, take the word and the spirit of God to release the mind of Christ. Once you release the mind, release the mind of Christ, your blind eyes are now open, and you can see what God's been doing for you. You can see all the blessings and all the things he's done for you, even when you don't think he's blessing you. And so you begin to give him thanksgiving. You begin to praise him. You begin to worship him. You begin to exalt him. Then you begin to move into his presence. And as you begin to move into his presence, you're thankful. You're grateful. You're in a position of thankfulness. You're in a position of humbleness. You're in a position ready to say, God, you, and nothing else. And then you step into the courts, and the judgment begins to come. The Word of God begins to judge. The Word of God begins to show you what's right and what's not right. What's true and what's not true. And then as you step out of that court, something happens. Those judgments have now been placed in the court of your heart. Those judgments are now in the court of your heart. And every time you activate that spiritual mind, every time you activate the mind of Christ, you come to that gate with thanksgiving. It knows how to release the judgments in your heart. It knows how to release those elements and things that God's been talking to you in your heart. It knows how to release them into your life and into your life. So basically... What you get in his presence, you can bring out and give to the world. What you get in his presence, you can come out, serve it first on you, and then serve it to the world. Amen? So praise the Lord. Anyway, I like that. Okay. First Chronicles chapter 16, we're going to start reading the seventh verse. Then on that day, David delivered first his psalms to thank the Lord in the hand of Aspeth and his brethren. What was the first thing David did? I'm sorry, what's the first thing he did? A song of what? To do what? A song of what? A song of what? First thing the king did was what? What's the first thing the king did? What's the first thing you're supposed to do? Thank the Lord. Now look what he said. Give thanks unto the Lord. Call upon his name. Make known his deeds among the people. Sing unto him. Sing songs unto him. And talk you all of his wondrous ways. Glory ye in his holy name, and let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Seek the Lord in his strength. Seek his face continually. Remember his marvelous works that he hath done, his wonders, and here's the part, and the judgment of his mouth. O you seed of Israel, his servant, ye children of Jacob, his chosen one. He is the Lord God. His judgments are are in all the earth. Be mindful always of his covenant, the word which he commanded to a thousand generations, even the covenant which he made with Abraham and his oath unto Isaac. Now I want you to look what he says here. He says his judgments are where? He says, I have placed judgments in all the earth. Honey, we are the earth that he has placed those judgments in. We are the earth that takes that wisdom and knowledge of the Word and the Spirit of God and applies it to our life to check our flesh, to check our actions, to check our speech against the Word and the Spirit of a living God. That's what we do. He says, my judgments are in all the earth. His judgments on me, his judgments in you. But to know which judgments need to be activated, we have to get in the presence of the Lord. We have to go into the court. We have to allow ourselves to be judged. See, if we've been showing Jesus, and we haven't done anything but show Jesus, we're not worried about being judged in the court. You only get worried about being judged in the court when you've done something wrong. When you've done something in error. Then you need to be worried about going to court. Amen? 
If you've been innocent, you've got nothing to worry about. He says, give thanks unto the Lord, call upon His name, make known His deeds among the people. Do you make known His deeds among people? Do you tell people about what God's done for you? Do you share with people the glory of the Lord? Do you talk about the Lord around people? Are you afraid somebody might catch you in a conversation you can't handle? Amen? The Bible says, sing unto Him psalms. Sing unto Him. Talk you of His wondrous works. Glory in His holy name. Let the heart of them rejoice that seek the Lord. Listen, we're not supposed to be a people of defeat. We're not supposed to be a people that is sad and down. But we're also not supposed to be a people that is motivated by carnality. That is motivated by the elements and situations and circumstances around us. We are supposed to be a royal priesthood and a holy nation that rises up and gives glory, praise, and honor to the Lord. It doesn't matter what the situation is. Give Him the praise. Give Him the glory. Thank you, Father. Thank you, God. If you only thank Him when something's going good, you don't thank Him very much. You don't thank Him very often. You have to thank Him the good times and the bad times. you got to thank Him when everything's rolling and everything's not. See, God's looking for a deeper level of spiritual intimacy with His people than He's ever had before. And in order to achieve the depth of that intimacy, it requires your presence in the court. And you can't get to the court without the right mind. And then when you have the right mind, you can walk into the court. And when you walk into the court, his word and spirit will judge. There will be judgments. You can walk out with those judgments, and then by the Holy Spirit that lives inside of you, you can activate those judgments. And as you activate those judgments, your flesh will be cut away, and your spiritual man will be released. That's what happens with the judgments of the Lord. When you begin to activate those judgments, His judgment says, this is not of me. This is not my word. This is not my spirit. You must remove this from your life. You must remove this from your actions. And what you have to do is obey God and activate those judgments. You can't do it on yourself. You can't do it in your own ability. The Bible says, we must lean not to our own understanding, but lean to the knowledge of God. For it is not what you can do but it's what he can do in you sometimes I only see people thankful when they get stuff you know here's the thing you don't understand if you get a brand new house that house is probably not going to sit there 500 years it's probably going to fall in the ground if you get a car unless you're just a really good collector and take really good care of it a car is probably not going to last 500 years Actually, to be honest with you, nothing is probably going to last a thousand years. Probably all be dust. But you slaved over it. You worried over it. You cried over it. You begged over it. You pleaded over it. And now it's dust. Perhaps what we should start doing is stop being dust wranglers and start being diamond searchers. Maybe that's what we should do. Stop looking for things that can turn to dust. Honey, that diamond is the hardest element known to man. It cuts stuff. That's what we need. We need a diamond shining in our heart. We need to get rid of all the elements that move our lust. We need to get rid of all the things that are pulling us to the right and pulling us to the left. And we need to set our eyes upon the Lord God Almighty. We need to walk towards Him and say, Father, not my will, but Your will be done. Not what I want, God, but what you want. Amen? He tells us to always remember his marvelous works and to speak of them. That's why when we come to church, we talk about the marvelous things that God has done. Marvelous things he is doing. Because we want to remind you to be thankful. We want to remind you to be grateful. I want you to think about this over the weekend. How grateful have you been to the Lord? How thankful are you to him? Do you stop and thank him every day? Or do you only thank him when it's something that makes you think about, oh, God must have done that for me. I'm going to tell you something. I've had some good times. I've had some hard times. I've had some happy times. I've had some bad times. But I'll tell you one thing. I thank the Lord for every breath I breathe. 
I thank the Lord for every time my eyes blinked. I thank the Lord for every step I took. Because the one thing I can tell you, I never took alone. The one thing I can tell you is never by myself. The Lord was with me. And even though the situation might have been challenging, even though the situation might have been tough, it was greater to know that my Lord God was with me and he brought me through it. I don't understand to the degree they do, but I do understand to a little bit about Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego. <clears throat> God could have took them out of that situation. God could have removed them. They didn't have to go down there. But they, and I, I love what they tell the king. They say, oh, Nebuchadnezzar, we know that our God is able to deliver us out of your hand. Here's the part I love. But even if he doesn't, we shall not bow. Even if he doesn't, we're not bowing. We're not bowing to you. We're not bowing to those statues because we are vessels of the living God. Amen. And I just want to say for the record, since the three Hebrew children wouldn't bow to anything but God, neither will Timothy. Amen. I won't bow to nothing but God. And I have no respect for anyone that does. I'm sorry, man. You bow to one thing. Bow to the Lord God Almighty. Bow to the Lord Jesus. Honey, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego said, We know, O King, that you can kill us. We know that our God can deliver us out of your hand. But if he chooses not, we shall not bow. And the Bible didn't say God got them out of it. The Bible didn't say God made an easy way. They walked right down to the furnace. They heated the furnace seven times hotter than it was to be. And the Hebrew children walked right into that fire. God didn't get them out of the fire. He didn't get them out of the fire, but he went through the fire. Because Nebuchadnezzar looked down there saw that fire ablazing and he said wait a minute how many men did we throw in there and they said we threw three okay Shadrach, Meshach and Abednego he said well wait a minute there's another man in the fire there's a fourth man in the fire oh come on church he said that fourth man mm, that fourth man looks like the son of God that fourth man has the image of the son of God Yes. <laughs> Here's the thing. This is going to make a lot of people mad. God never promised you a rose garden. God never told you there'd be no thorns. God never told you there wouldn't be a fight. Trust me, if he got a crown of thorns, you're going to face some thorns too. Don't think you're any better than your master. That's the problem. See, there's an arrogancy established in progressive Christianity. There's an arrogance there. Like God owes you something. Like God needs to give you something. Honey, and like God needs to be into what you think. Be into your opinion. Be into you what your ideas are. Let me tell you something. You did not make him. He made you. Oh, somebody hear. Oh, somebody hear me. You didn't make him. He made you. You didn't make him. He made you. He didn't create the world through you. He created it through His Son, Jesus Christ. Come on, hear me now. Jesus Christ. That's why everything in this world must respond to the name of Jesus Christ. It was all made under Jesus, and under Jesus, it must respond. It has no choice. It must respond. Has to do. See? The place that we've come to is a place of physical carnal arrogancy where we would think, here's the thing, we don't, we got people preaching we don't need the Holy Ghost no more. We got people preaching we don't need the Bible no more. How are we going to enter into the presence of God without the Word and the Spirit? How are we going to get the mind of Christ without the Word and the Spirit? You're going to think you're going to get the mind of Christ because you mitigate all a man's wisdom, all a man's knowledge, all a man's understanding. You think you're going to get it because you understand a few languages and you can get to understand some. Let me tell you something. This Bible's been in America for over 200 years. And in that 200 years, it's filled thousands with the Holy Ghost. It's established their faith. It's brought them to victory. And God has manifested Himself through them. I got 200 years of proof about this Bible. Can you say praise God? I don't need something new. Something for today. i said this a bunch of times. It gets me in trouble, but it's true. We don't need relevancy. We need revelation. 
We need a revelation. Relevancy changes every five years. Relevancy will change. What's relevant today will not be relevant five years from now. What's relevant five years from now will not be relevant the next five years. But here's the beauty of it. Relation was good from the day God created it. Revelation was good the day God breathed on it. And that revelation is still good right now. That revelation is good right now. But you can't get to the relation without the word, without the spirit, without established truth. Without transformation. You can't get her. Can you say amen? Woo! Sorry, I'm getting carried away, man. Getting, away. getting in trouble. For a <laughs> in these last days, more than any other time in the history of the church, God is inviting his people into his presence, into his anointing, into his spirit. He said, I gave you everything you need to enter into my presence. I gave you everything I, you need. Come to my gates thankful. Come to my gates grateful. Now ask yourself this question. If you come to God's presence and God's gates going, Lord, I need this and I need that and I want this and I want that and I need this and I want that. Where'd the presence of God go? Where's it at? The minute you started that, you went down the road <laughs> You're not going to make it in the throne room. There is one way to enter through the throne room. And that's the Jesus Christ. And the only way you can enter through him is to be thankful for what he did. To be thankful for his sacrifice. To be thankful for the spirit and for the anointing. You mark my words. If you start being more thankful to God. Being more grateful to God. Taking the time to say it. Taking the time to live in it. Taking the time to walk in it. If you'll do that, you're going to see a drastic change in your life. You're going to see God do some things in your life. You'll feel His presence more. When you're driving down the road, you might have to pull over. Feeling the presence of the Lord. You might have to stick up your hands and start praising Him. On this day, tomorrow, that celebrates Thanksgiving. We as Christians need to mark this day as a reminder that we should not be thankful one time a year, but we should be thankful every single day that God has been with us, God is for us, and if God be for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? I know tonight might seem like a very simple message to you, but I want you to understand with thankfulness comes access to the presence. And in the presence comes the judgment of revelation that will bring you into intimacy with God. See, think of this. If you've entered the presence with thankfulness, if you've entered that court with praise and God's put His judgments in you and then you come out of there and activate those judgments by the Word and Spirit of God, how much closer to God will you be tomorrow than you are today? Much closer. Because the elements that hindered you have been judged and removed. Now comes the question. What about those of you who never enter the presence of God? What about those of you that don't seek His presence today? Seek it once in a while? You need to start seeking Him daily. But you're not going to get into that prison without being thankful. You're just not going to get there. It's just not going to happen. How many of you love the Lord tonight? He's worthy to be praised. Amen. Praise the Lord. You can never go wrong when you make a decision to be thankful to God. You know, Jenny, that's one of the things I'm the most grateful for and most thankful for. Is I'm thankful that uh, God put you in my life, and I'm thankful for the opportunities that God gives us to share our faith, share our relationship. I agree, and I am thankful as well for you. And I think sometimes, and I say this even as Christians, we take God for granted. Sometimes we, we stop looking at the blessings, even the small things that God does in our life, and we must always be a people that forever we look at everything big and small, yes, and Lord. we're grateful. We are always Amen. honoring the Lord. So today, I'm thankful for you, mm -hmm. and we together are thankful for our Lord and Savior, yes. Jesus Amen. Christ. Well, you know, one thing we don't want to find ourselves being, we don't want to be spoiled children. We want to be faithful children. Exactly. Sit back right now, and you know, one of the ways we become faithful children, Jenny, is when we spend more time with the Lord. Yes. 
And right now, here they are, the Winds of Fire flag team. Time. We've When I'm in your prison What joy I find Even in my trial I feel peace of mind In you, Jesus Sweetest name I know Oklahoma, 1005 Southwest 4th Street. If you'd like any more information about it, you can please give us a call at the box office, 405-793-7779. We hope to see you out here for Trent Smith as Young Elvis. Revival for Christ Club is on the move, and this time we're coming to San Antonio, Texas. We're going to be going at the Burning Bush Ministry Tabernacle of Praise. Holy Ghost, don't come in where there's flesh. Holy Ghost, got to see the Word. Holy Ghost, got to see the anointing. Holy Ghost, got to see the Spirit. But here's the problem. The church has lost its voice. 
September 9th through 11th at 7.30 at night and 11.45 on Sunday morning. Come out if you want to experience a Holy Ghost touch, whether you're freshly new into this and you want to see that fire for yourself, or this is something you've experienced for, but you want something new and a refreshing in your soul. Come out to see our experienced ministers, Chief Apostle Timothy Vanover and Apostle Jenny Vanover, as they come and let the Holy Ghost move with freedom in their vessels. But he delivers a double portion of the Spirit of God, of the anointing of God, of the Holy Ghost of God. Come out to see what the Holy Ghost has in store for you. Here at Revival for Christ Club, we have a lot of different opportunities for people to express their passion and love for the Lord. The flag team is one of them. The mind team, our dramatics department. We're very blessed with some very talented individuals. As a matter of fact, right now we've got a very talented young lady that's going to come and talk to you one more time about our apostles. Revival for Christ Club International Ministries presents the Holy Ghost Apostles Conference 2022 with Chief Apostle Timothy Vanover. The Bible says in Corinthians 6, says you are the temple of the Holy Ghost. You are the temple of the living God. Now, if we are a temple, how can we expect a holy and a righteous God to dwell in a contaminated temple? Apostle Larry Fisher. You're not, you're not holy because you change how you act or where you go or the company that you that you keep. You're holy based on the victories that you receive inwardly that you allow for the Holy Spirit to take you through the process. Apostle Jenny Van. God is raising up an army of warriors. And when they speak, they will speak with a two-edged sword and a flame of fire. We are yet to see the greatest revival that God will bring to the body of Christ. Join so us August 12th through the 14th, nightly at 7.30 p.m and Sunday at 11 a.m. as we unite the mantles of God's Holy Ghost tribes. It's been a real pleasure and honor to have you with us today. Thank you so much for tuning in Revival for Christ. We come every Monday and Thursday right here on Christ Family Apostolic Network. Our only goal here is to exalt and lift up our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. When we come to your church, we bring our Eagle Fly team. They'll bring flag teams and mine teams. and We'll give you a revival like nothing you've ever seen before. Amen. And what we'll do when we come, we will ask you for nothing. We don't come to ask or to take. We come to give and to bless. So if you're interested in putting the torch alive in your area, give us a call. Area code 405-793-1777. That's 405-793-1777. Or you can write Jenny or any of us at any of the addresses that are going to be mentioned here in just a moment. And don't forget YouTube, RFC International Ministries. We upload daily. Like, subscribe, and share. We would love to have you a part of our tribe. Anyway, thank you so much for tuning in today. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We pray that something fabulous happens to you today. And when it does, don't forget to give the Lord the thanks Amen. and the praise. Thanks so much for tuning in. Let's put the devil where he Let's belongs. Do it. Satan, <laughs> you are defeated. And Jesus is Lord. And it couldn't be any other way. Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next week at the same time right here on the Mighty Sea Fan when we know our God has something fabulous for you. Hello, my name is Ryan Colley. I'm the Administrative Vice President and International Evangelist of Revival for Christ Club International Ministries. We'd like to thank you so much for tuning into our program today. And if you would like to ignite the flame in your area, we would love to bring the love of Jesus to you. All you got to do is reach out to us by phone at 405-793-1777. You can also reach out to us on Facebook by direct message at Revival for Christ Club International Ministries or on YouTube. Also, if you would like to help us spread the flame around the world, you can do it in so many different ways. First off, you can do it through our cash app. That's RFC Roar. That's money sign RFC R O. A -R. Also, you can do credit card by phone at 405-793-1777. Now, once again, that's 405-793-1777. And finally, you can mail your support to 1005 Southwest 4th Street, Moore, Oklahoma, 73160. Once again, we'd like to thank everybody for tuning into our program today. Remember, we are a ministry with a vision built on a plan, the Word of God.